We are going to look at a type three problem. It's, I have called this in the past a trial KSP problem. Probably a better name for it would be a Q, because we're gonna be finding a Q value, a, Q, a QSP instead of a KSP. Could be a little name we could give this one. But we're trying to figure out we're going to be given amounts of things and trying to figure out if a precipitate will form. So let's take a look at an example that we could have. Will silver chloride precipitate form if one times 10 to the negative fourth moles of sodium chloride is added to two times 10 to the negative fifth moles of silver nitrate? So my first thought is silver chloride is very insoluble. Of course, it's going to form a precipitate, but look at how small these amounts are. Okay, so maybe these small amounts could still stay dissolved in there. So how do you know it's really doing a QSP problem where we find a Q value, compare it to K and figure out which way, what's favored in equilibrium and solve for that. So over here I have um, what happened, NaCl plus AgNO3 formed NaNO3 plus AgCl. NaNO3 is gonna be a lot more soluble than AgCl Okay, so we're not gonna even worry about the NaNO3. We're just gonna worry about the AgCl. So we're gonna take that equation and actually talk about it. If we had a solid of that, it would break up into Ag plus and Cl minus. So we're gonna do a KSP um, dissociation equation for AgCl and then write that KSP expression, which is KSP equals Ag plus concentration times the Cl minus concentration. Okay, now instead of saying, oh, this is a solid, it's gonna break up in equal amounts of these things, X and X, we're getting our amounts from a different um, source. So look at uh, one times 10 to the negative fourth moles of sodium chloride. We don't care about the sodium, but we care about the chloride. So because sodium chloride and sodium chloride and sodium and chloride all are in a one-to-one -one ratio, we can say we have one times 10 to the negative fourth moles of chloride and the total solution is one liter. So I take that one times 10 to the negative fourth over one liter and I have my concentration of Cl minus. Okay, and then for silver nitrate, I have two times 10 to the negative fifth moles of silver nitrate, which is in a one-to-one -one ratio with the silver and the nitrate. We don't care about the nitrate, we do care about the silver so it's gonna be two times 10 to the negative fifth moles of silver over that one liter right there. And that will mean that's my molarity, two times 10 to the negative fifth molarity for silver. So we have our silver concentration, we have our chloride concentration right here. And we are going to solve for Q, plugging in those numbers. So just like KSP equals AG plus times Cl minus, Q equals Ag plus time, times Cl minus. So we say Q equals Ag plus is two times 10 to the negative fifth and the Cl minus is one times 10 to the negative fourth and that equals two times 10 to the negative ninth. That's a pretty small number, but it is still bigger than the actual K value or the actual KSP value. So if Q is bigger than the actual KSP value, you have too much products. Some of the products are going to go back to the reactants, forming solid. And if it forms solid, yes, a precipitate is going to form. So again, if your Q value is bigger than your K value, what some products get converted to reactants, it shifts left, and that would form um, some of this solid here. So yes, a precipitate will form. Um, this other part is just a uh, type 3B problem. Don't worry about that for now. We're going to see that in a week or so. So you can let that go for a while. Okay, let's go to one more where the ratios aren't, everything isn't in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, will a precipitate form if 2 times 10 to the negative 10th moles of aluminum nitrate is added to 1 times 10 to the negative 9th moles of the sodium hydroxide? And it's talking about aluminum hydroxide. Do you need to write this whole equation out? I don't think so. No, you don't need to. You're going to be focusing on aluminum hydroxide because that's the least soluble. Um, and the other thing, it gives you the KSP and it asks you specifically about that. 
We don't spend time writing that, but I just wanted to show you where that came from. But I'm gonna take the ALOH3 and do the dissociation equation for that, AL plus three plus three OH minus, and then write the KSP expression. KSP equals AL plus three plus OH minus concentration to the third power. So this is where you gotta be a little bit careful. Okay, if it was coming from a like type one problem um, or a type two problem, you would have, if this were X, this would be um, three X. Or if this were a solubility, OH would be three times as much. But AL plus three and OH are coming from outside sources. So if I look at the aluminum nitrate, what two times 10 to the negative 10th moles per one liter, and that's the same as the concentration of aluminum um, if I were doing concentration of nitrate, it would actually be, I'd have to multiply it by three, but I'm not. I'm doing concentration of aluminum and aluminum nitrate and aluminum are both two times 10 to the negative 10th over one liter. So that's okay right there. I'm gonna put that in right here. Now notice where the um, OH is coming from. It's coming from sodium hydroxide, not aluminum hydroxide. So if it's one times 10 to the negative ninth moles of sodium hydroxide, it's one times 10 to the negative ninth moles of sodium and one times 10 to the negative ninth moles of hydroxide over one liter. So I don't triple it because it's coming from sodium hydroxide. Okay, let's say it was coming from barium hydroxide, which is BaOH2, I would actually have to double it. If it was coming something with an OH3, then I would have to triple it, but it's not, it's coming from NaOH, one-to-one -one ratio in this. So that's why I didn't double or triple it here like I did in a type one or two problem. Okay, so I got my value of AL plus three. I got my value of OH. I plug it in the KSP expression. Now plugging in into the KSP expression, I didn't triple it, but I still have to cube it. Okay, so I'm gonna do two times 10 to the negative 10th times one times 10 to the negative ninth cubed. And that becomes two times 10 to the negative 37th, which is um, smaller than 1.4 or 1.9 times 10 to the negative 33rd. So even though this is very, very insoluble, as you can see by this KSP, I have such small amounts that the Q is less than the KSP, which means products will continue to form reactants and it will all dissolve. Okay, so all the AL plus three and OH minus at these concentrations does dissolve, no precipitate forms. So that is a type three problem. And I think we get that in section 16.2 of your text. Good luck working with those.